Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Uh, I'm here live at the biggest Web3 roadshow in South Korea called IXO 2024, hosted by Token Post. Uh, today we have invited Ren, CEO of Orderly Network. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first question is that uh, how did you come to found Order Network? Tell us a little bit about your uh, background and life story. Sure. Um, so I graduated 2006 mm -hmm. in the US. My first job was at Freddie Mac. <clears throat> it's a um, financial company mm -hmm. in the US. Mm -hmm. And it was at the center of the great financial crisis mm -hmm. back in 2000. Uh, seven, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and during that time, I really witnessed the downfall mm -hmm. of the entire like U.S. financial system, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a it's a centralized mm -hmm. issue, right? I think we actually met a similar issue uh, in 2022 with the downfall of FTX, mm -hmm. um, Celsius, mm -hmm. uh, Babel, and such, mm -hmm. which caused a big deleveraging in mm -hmm. the in the crypto e ecosystem, mm -hmm. very similar to what happened in 2007. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a, you know, understanding of what so Satoshi was <laughs> trying to do when he wrote the white paper, mm -hmm. right? Uh, fortunately, I got into crypto uh, in 2017, mm -hmm. so about seven years mm -hmm. ago, and I've been in the rabbit hole ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, and further and further down, actually. Initially, we started off trading, mm -hmm. where I helped build um, a trading company called Kronos Research in 2018. Mm -hmm. And then we started an exchange called Wu in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I led all the, the DeFi efforts mm -hmm. uh, there. And then in 2021, mm -hmm. we decided to go further into DeFi mm -hmm. with the incubation of Orderly, which I, which I lead now. Orderly was incubated by Wu and Nier. Mm -hmm. um, and what it is, is a decentralized order book with shared liquidity uh, between blockchains. Um, and we aim to be the permissionless liquidity layer for Web3 trading. Mm -hmm. um, we can. Uh, you know, elaborate more about that, but it's just more and more into DeFi, mm. um, going from trading to centralized exchange to DeFi infrastructure. Mm. Okay, you mentioned the the permission last uh, some something, right? So, what is the main challenge that Orderly Network solves in DeFi yeah. and Web3, yeah. and how how does it permissionless liquidity layer approach uniquely address for users and developers? Yeah, yeah. so um, I would say Web2 exchanges. Centralized exchanges are Web2 companies. Mm -hmm. They're very similar to, I'd say, Facebook or Google in that they have a lot of employees, like Binance, I think, has 6,000 or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's very much, uh, the, the company builds a product mm -hmm. and they compete on product and the users are users of the product, right? Similar to Web2. Mm -hmm. And the take rate for exchanges could be um, quite high. What's mm -hmm. actually just, it's not like a, a uh, content-based, like uh, it's not a multi-level um, ecosystem where everyone's contributing content and, and consuming content. Mm -hmm. It's more the exchanges creating content or product, and then the users they consume it. Um, there's very little uh, sharing of economics with the users. The users are consumers; they pay trading fees and mm -hmm. and whatnot in the user products. Uh, and I think it's very Web two. The only the only part of it being Web three mm -hmm. is that the users can buy the, the mm -hmm. tokens for mm -hmm. the exchanges and right. share in part of the, the growth mm -hmm. of, the, of the companies. Yeah. But it, the nature of it, is, I think, is still very Web2. Mm -hmm. uh, but these exchanges, they have really good UX. They have you know, competitive fees and they have very fast speeds, mm -hmm. right? And they have a lot of products, yeah. which the users mm -hmm. like. That's why Binance and OKX are so big, okay. you know, with hundreds of millions of users. Mm -hmm from around the world. Mm -hmm. but I think the future is gearing towards more decentralized, mm -hmm. more DeFi, where the applications are actually using blockchain technology mm -hmm. to the fullest, right? Mm -hmm. Like why doesn't blockchain settle trades mm -hmm. on the network? That's kind of what, what it's good for, right? Mm -hmm. Like Ethereum or other networks, mm -hmm. um, everything can be transparent on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. Right now, exchanges are not actually transparent. Yep. Uh, and just centralized entities in crypto in general. So you have some of the crisis that we've seen. Mm -hmm. So we, we, what we aim to do is to build the infrastructure that allows decentralized exchanges 
to have the same UX as centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. but the transparency mm -hmm. and tokenomics mm -hmm. of DeFi, mm -hmm. and hence the permissionless liquidity layer mm -hmm. of Web3. Mm -hmm. um, it solves a few pain points. On the CeFi side, it solves the lack of transparency mm -hmm. in CeFi, which doesn't exist in CeFi, right? Mm -hmm. And, and the fact that we, uh, we're not shared, we don't have shared economics mm -hmm. in centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. right? Uh, consumers are just using the product, they're not getting the upside. Yeah. Uh, but DeFi, there's also many issues with UX being bad, there's fragmented liquidity across chains, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the costs are high. Mm -hmm. So the UX in DeFi generally is not good, mm -hmm. right? So we aim to create the UX and experience of centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. but the transparency and tokenomics of DeFi. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're solving for, mm -hmm. leveraging all that blockchain has mm -hmm. to offer. Mm -hmm. um, hence, uh, the permissionless liquidity layer that's shared between blockchains. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so, what's the biggest challenge for the DeFi founders today? Do you think that? <laughs> there are many, many challenges. Oh, challenges. <laughs> and we've gone through many of them. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are challenges with the onboarding of users mm -hmm. Uh, which is not even solved by protocols like us. Mm -hmm. It's solved by f fiat on-ramps improving themselves. Mm -hmm. It's solved by um, account aggregation, mm -hmm. uh, account abstraction wallets, and now there's account <laughs> aggregation. Mm -hmm. So the easier, the, the onboarding is getting easier through wallets and fiat on-ramps mm -hmm. into the Web3 space, right? Like OKX has a really good Web3 wallet. Mm -hmm. um, the onboarding is getting easier. Mm -hmm. And other issues are how to have an effective infrastructure between blockchains mm -hmm. when the, the chains are kind of, some are dying off and some new ones are coming up mm -hmm. uh, and the infrastructure that links them, that links between them is changing. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to adapt to that, right? Mm -hmm. Currently we're using layer zero for cross-chain messaging. We're using CCTP mm -hmm. for uh, asset bridging. Mm -hmm. I mean, but this infrastructure might change or might need to be upgraded in the future and we're ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like how Windows um, or Unix upgrades from uh, you know the really slow and clunky versions of the 90s mm -hmm. to what it is mm -hmm. like today, yeah. right? Uh, and that's how we see you know Ethereum and now Layer Twos and potentially Layer Threes and other non-EVM blockchains evolve, and we have to adapt to that as the layer in between them and the apps uh, mm -hmm. on top. Um, there's issues with gas, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we had huge spikes in gas. Um, you know, when activity is high. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, we tried using Celestia as, as data availability. Mm -hmm. And now with uh, uh, Dan Kuhn upgrade for, for Ethereum, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the prices have come down a lot. So mm -hmm. these are a lot of the intricacies that we've, we have to deal with mm -hmm. uh, on the back end. And at the same time, letting the users, mm -hmm. like the users cannot feel this, mm -hmm. right? They, they're just using a product. They don't need to know if it's CFI or DeFi, yeah. but ultimately they're enjoying the, mm -hmm. the rewards mm -hmm that you get as a user in DeFi, mm -hmm. hence like the tokenomics, mm -hmm. yet the trans you have the transparency mm -hmm. of DeFi, but the user experience of CeFi, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going for. Mm -hmm. Eventually you want like a Binance-like experience, but fully on chain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the, mm -hmm. the tipping point for, for mass more re retail adoption, user mm -hmm. adoption of mm -hmm. DeFi. Okay. Yeah. So uh, th uh, this question is related to Korean market. Yep. The, what makes the Korean market unique regarding DeFi and cryptocurrencies? Do you think that? Right. So the Korean market, I would say, is like the third largest market of, in the world mm -hmm. for crypto trading. Um, it's huge, mm -hmm. right? Korean, um, you know, the, Korean, the average <laughs> uh, trading size, tra trading volume of the average Korean user is, is high mm -hmm. relative to the world average. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of Korean users. I mean, the, the, the penetration rate is quite high. Mm -hmm. So hence, we can see the, you know, from the volumes of some of the Korean centralized exchanges, mm -hmm. like, Bitum and Upbit. Mm -hmm. um, I think people from all over the world are targeting Korean users, mm -hmm. um, but some in a, in a less compliant way, mm -hmm. right? Which, which is getting uh, more regulated. Yep. I think DeFi, DeFi penetration in Korea is, is low. Um, the, the, the amount of education and apps and ecosystem and chains in Korea is, is, is not high, right? But it's getting developing. So we see it as like a really big potential mm -hmm. for growth. Mm -hmm. And if these DeFi applications are secure mm -hmm. and user-friendly, mm -hmm. then you know, it has less risk than the centralized mm -hmm. applications mm -hmm. of before, but it can get more user adoption. And there's more game, you know, um, mm -hmm. gamified experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, so I think it's, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big opportunity for mm -hmm. DeFi in general. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, for the for the Korean market, mm -hmm. right? But you know, the so for orderly, we're we're not targeting retail users. Mm -hmm. We're um, we're really leveraging the interoperability of DeFi in that we're building the liquidity layer mm -hmm. where brokers on top mm -hmm. can target whichever user mm -hmm. they want, mm -hmm. and they can have all the necessary compliance requirements for whichever users they want, mm -hmm. right? Like different geographies, mm -hmm. um, different types of mm -hmm. types of users. Mm -hmm. So we imagine one day that um, an app um, on top of Orderly, mm -hmm. leveraging the Orderly liquidity, perhaps on a, a Korean-based Korea -based chain, mm -hmm. can target Korean users in a compliant way, mm -hmm. where they have potentially KYC and travel rule mm -hmm. compliant. Super easily. <laughs> yeah, for, for, this, for this market, mm -hmm. right? And it's, a whole, it's, also, it's again a decentralized experience. Mm -hmm. It could be a gateway from a wallet, a Web3 mm -hmm. wallet, perhaps Burrito Wallet is one of the, the larger wallets here. Mm -hmm. Um, but to target, you know, to have the product be specified mm -hmm. towards the needs of the Korean user mm -hmm. um, and be fully compliant and decentralized. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that product will get a lot of adoption. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with recent developments like Bitcoin ETFs or the halving and you know, Odinos and layer two solutions, how do you, how do you imagine the future of DeFi built yeah. on Bitcoin? Yeah. So um, I, again, I think we need a Binance. Uh, or centralized exchange-like experience, mm -hmm. where users are depositing a native asset mm -hmm. from whatever chain they want, mm -hmm. right? And ideally, they don't even feel the chains, yeah. uh, but they're only using the native asset, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of wrapped assets mm -hmm. in DeFi, mm -hmm. which is risky, it's, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. There's been hacks. Um, we want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. There's no DEX that has really enabled native Bitcoin, aside mm -hmm. from you know, door swap, but then the experience yeah. is not that good, the costs are high. Um, we want to enable native Bitcoin spot trading mm -hmm. and Bitcoin as collateral for perpetuals mm -hmm. in DeFi. Uh, and that hasn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. But I think you know, it will be accomplished in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm very bullish on, on the Bitcoin layer 2 ecosystem and alternative assets mm -hmm. like Ornos and, and such mm -hmm. um, into DeFi. Mm -hmm. If you know, integrated with EVM mm -hmm. and other ecosystem in a very secure way, mm -hmm. which is, you know, we're actively finding partners for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, eventually the experience will be, you can deposit native Bitcoin from the Bitcoin blockchain into some DEX mm -hmm. and trade and you, or use it as collateral mm -hmm. uh, and, to deposit, and to withdraw it out into native Bitcoin and not mm -hmm. deal with wrapped assets. Mm -hmm. I think ideally that's what, that's what we want right. for DeFi. Okay. Yep. Cool. So lastly, uh, yeah. what advice would you give to someone who is new to the space and looking, for, uh, looking to learn more? I think uh, like should, should definitely have, uh, get enough education about the space mm -hmm. before like investing mm -hmm. or doing something mm -hmm. in crypto. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would suggest mm -hmm. uh, reading a lot of media like Token Post, right? Study first, right? Yeah, study <laughs> first and then there's a lot of YouTube channels yeah. that are great, especially in, in yeah. the Korean market, educational. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I would su suggest use the products, right? You can use a tiny amount of capital yeah. and to use all types of products mm -hmm. um, to try to experience it and to learn about it mm -hmm. um, and to not risk uh, a ton of capital. Mm -hmm. And I think using it will really allow you to understand mm -hmm. what you know, CFI and DeFi is all about. Totally great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Ran. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Ran, uh, CEO of Orderly Network. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.